a a we are live 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 are we live yeah we're live we are live yeah. Get in that for our fun today. Yeah, I have that over there. Okay, cool. Get some. Good morning, Chloe. Let's get some. There we go. Here's my notification to get it on my phone. I really do like having it on my phone. Just in case chat gets obscured by a window on my computer. Alright, let's get some links going here. Pretty link. Alright. Ah, yes. That one. This one, perhaps. And I think that's all the... Oh, no, I have one more. Oh, no, two... No, no. Oh, the, here's the... That, that's right. Two more links, actually. Here we go. Here we go. Wobbling. Fritida. All right. <clears throat> Good morning, Audrey. I wanted. There we go. All right. So let me grab out my little attendance sheet here. Attendance sheet. Uh. So oh, Destiny. I sorry, I did not see you there. Um. Uh, welcome. Good morning, Aaliyah. Welcome. 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 Rachel. Uh, so we got CW, the the CW. <clears throat> I wonder if anybody, if um has nobody if 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 nobody's ever given you that nickname, I claim it. Um, Chloe. Ah, uh, good morning, Sophia. All right. <sighs> my goodness, it's almost nine o'clock. Where did the morning get away from me? Oh my jeez. Oh my jeez. Oh my jeez. Good. I'm glad. <laughs> <clears throat> so if I catch you on campus, I should be like, look, it's the CW over there. Good morning, Elena. And Tyler, welcome. Mm. Mm. Ba -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. You know, the chat box over there makes you all the same color, and it's really annoying. Luckily, I have in my own chat box different colors. Uh, good times. That's that's a bit frustrating. Who said what now? Who said what now? Alrighty. Uh, we'll we'll have the others trickle in. Good morning to you all. Uh, this is the last stream of the first week. We're almost a quarter of the way done with this summer course. Um, so kudos to you all for um, making it through. I mean, your first week isn't quite done yet, 
Uh, so to start us off today, I want to just make an administrative announcement. Um, so as a reminder, because I will not be sending out an email, or I might actually, because some people are still having um, problems getting to the stream. Um, as a reminder, you have a quiz, you have another quiz tomorrow, um, that is just an encapsulation of, um, this last week. It's a short, I think there are six questions, and then a bonus seventh. So there are a total of seven, but... One of them is a bonus question for bonus points. And honestly, if you don't answer it, you're just throwing those points away. Um, so definitely answer it. There's a It's a no wrong answer sort of thing. Grayson, good morning. Elena, uh, yeah, we are going to explore today's today's topic. Um, so that is tomorrow. And you have, um, you have all day to do it. It's timed once you start it. But you have all day to do it. So, um, my best advice to you is to, you know, get a good night's sleep, um, have a, you know, do what you need to do. Uh, if you're working, work it. Uh, if you're, if you're not working, have a decent breakfast and, uh, get in the zone. Okay. It's open, it's open notebook, video, video, video lecture. So, um, yeah, engage with all of that. Um, so. You have 60 minutes once you start it. You have not from midnight tonight through 11.59 Friday morning. Okay. Um, if you have any issues while you're taking the quiz let me know as soon as possible tomorrow okay let me know as soon as possible tomorrow i'm going to be away from um my keyboard for quite a bit of the day but um if I, I i get notifications on this bad boy so if there's something pressing i will i will take care of it um having to delete because you only get one attempt, so having to delete attempts might might be a thing. But just make sure your internet is stable when you sit down to start it. Okay, uh, Joe, I'm not entirely sure what you mean by unable to uh, unpause the stream. You might need to reduce the quality of the stream and so not uh, be streaming at 1080p, but maybe 720p or even 480p. Um means the quality of the image gets crappier but at least you'll be able to watch it i'm not entirely sure what you mean by unable to uh uh unable to unpause okay i'm gonna switch or yeah audrey that's a good uh try refreshing the page yeah that's good i'm gonna switch to this view here because the first activity that we are going to do is a fun one. I like it. I like this one. I do this in class. Uh, it, I definitely do this in um, the regular social psych class that I teach during the semester. But I also sometimes do it in um, Psych 101 because most of the time Psych 101 people don't know me. Um, and that's very true of this group, even though this is not like gen psych it's social psych um but mostly this this group doesn't really know me all that well maybe uh, i think only like a couple of you actually uh have taken a class from me before so we're gonna play a little game that's going to illustrate some sort of um uh some sort of <laughs> i know what i'm talking about uh it's gonna it illustrate an aspect of attributions that um is um we'll, we'll use the word we'll use the word common in uh teacher student dynamics okay so this is how it's gonna work i want you 
to think of a thing that you know a lot about and come up with a trivia question about it, okay? And I will choose, and 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 so when you do, but don't do anything in chat yet. So just think of that question, okay? Um, and then so when I tell you, throw them in chat, okay? When I tell you, throw them in chat. So think of a, a trivia question. Um, think of a question. So. I'm going to write this down. So think of a trivia question in a subject you know a lot about. Now we're going to choose 10 of them. I'm going to choose 10 of them, okay? I'm going to choose 10 of them. Um, get a piece of paper here that I can actually write on. Um... What I want you to do in chat right now. Hi, Merrick. Uh, what I want you to do in chat right now is tell me how many out of the ten you think I will get right. With the knowledge of the last week, so to speak, uh of me that you think I will get out of 10. So how many right out of 10 do you think I will I will get? Let me know in chat right now. Just a number. Just a number out of 10. I'll know it's if you just put like okay. So we've got a 7, a 7, 6, a 6, a 6. Um, another six, another six, five, four, okay, place your bets, place your bets, <laughs> uh, chat here a little bit bigger all right for anybody else coming out coming in with a guess Couple of uh, couple of no votes there, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the average of that. Six plus five plus four. Okay. Divided by nine. So, with the votes, an average of five point eight eight that you think I'd get right, or five point eight nine. It's actually 5.88 repeating. So about six, because obviously it's not going to be a fraction. Okay. So on average, six. All right. So when you have, do not give the answer, just the question. Put the question in chat. And um, I, I need at least 10 questions. So every, pretty much everybody needs to drop a question. Um. So throw that in chat when you are ready, and then once all the questions are uh, once all the questions are there, I'll kind of I guess I'll go in sort of one at a time, and then we'll write down our answers. So I'm gonna write down my answers, and if you want to play along, write down your answers, uh, and then uh, we'll we'll have once we go through the round of answering. Then we'll have the question asker give the correct answer. Okay? 
So literally anything, Chloe. Literally anything. Uh, TV show, badminton, uh, 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 knitting, uh, underwater basket weaving. You know, anything. Anything that you know a lot about so you can be sure that you have the correct answer. What rhymes with orange? Borange, of course. Damn. Tarot cards. Right? Tarot, tarot cards. A golden Duke. I'm gonna see what my students have but if there isn't if there's a need for a tenth one i'll i'll take your orange one okay all right so who voices louise in the show bob's burgers and no cheating i'm i'm not gonna go look it up i mean i know you can't tell what's going on on my screens here but no i i i i say to you no cheating um Bob's Burgers. Um, make sure I don't say these out loud. All right. Uh, the second one that I'm going with is how many cards are there in a deck of tarot cards? And I'm trying really hard to get the answers. Okay, the third one that I'm going with is where do Steve and Robin work together from Stranger Things? True story, Steve is my avatar for um, my Netflix account. True story. Uh, the fourth one that I'm going for is uh, in basketball. How long in seconds are you allowed to stay inside the lane? All right. The fifth question that I am going with is which of Angela's cats did Dwight freeze in the office? I assume you're looking for the name of that cat. Um, okay, and then the sixth question that I am oh, going a little too far. Uh, I think it's Elena's now. Uh, is how many curly hair types are there, including the subcategories? Curly hair types, including categories. Wow. I'll drive a hard bargain on this one. <sighs> okay, the seventh question that I am going with is the chessboard killer officially murdered 62 people, but how many did he claim? Never heard of this person. Never, never heard of this person. Um, how many did he claim? I don't know. Good guesses, everyone. Uh, the eighth question that I'm going with. The office casting team originally wanted to audition for... Wanted who to audition for the role of Dwight? No, no clue. Um, all right. Uh, the ninth question that I am going for is who are the founders of Delta Sigma Phi? Um... I 
I'm assuming the chapter at Eureka. Yeah. That's my Eureka knowledge. And then the tenth one. That I'm going to go with. Is. Uh, Grayson's here. In 1938. Albert Hoffman synthesized what substance in Sandoz lab. That is often regarded as the future of modern psychiatry. Um. All right. Oh, man. Okay, just Delta Sigma Phi in general. That makes it so much. That makes it so much better. Uh, good stuff. Uh, all right. Uh, Russian. That's probably why I haven't heard of it. Robin is my avatar. And my sister's is Steve to match. Nice. Um, all right. All right. So, um, who, uh, uh, Chloe, who voices Louise in, in Bob's Burgers? Who voices Louise? Have your answers ready. Um, and then you can just hit enter. Uh, I can tell you that my answer was a man of some sort. Ah, yeah, see. I don't know who Louise is. I did know that Christian Shaw um, voices a character. Hey, thanks for the follow, you. The, 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 Kievit? Uh, yes, she's the only female cat. Yeah, okay. All right. Yeah, so I got that one wrong. Okay, I don't watch Bob's Burgers. Um, I do did know Christian Shaw was one of them, but then all of the other characters are voiced by men. Yeah, okay. Number two. Um, the question was, how many cards are there in a deck of tarot cards? I can tell you that um, I do not care for tarot. And so my answer was a shot in the dark, 25. That's probably too low. It's probably too low, but... Let me hear it. Let me hear it. I'm doing well, Kievit. The Kievit. 78 cards. That sounds like a that's sounds like too much. <laughs> sounds like too much. All right. Next one, number 3. Now my answer to this question, where do Steve and Robin work together from Stranger Things, was an ice cream shop. That's my answer. I should get a half a point for that one um, because I couldn't remember the name of the... I couldn't remember the name of it. So, what? What? what is it? Ice cream shop in a mall, by the way. How oh, the 80s. Scoops Ahoy! That's, yes, the boat... <laughs> the maritime theme of getting your ice cream. A maritime theme. All right, well, I'm going to give myself a half a point. Because I was close. I was close. And there are really no rules for the scoring. All right, next one. I think this was Rachel. In basketball, how long in seconds are you allowed to stay inside the lane? I believe it's three, right? It's three seconds. And I gotta say that it's like the lamest, one of the lamest rules I've ever, I've ever heard. That with um, the lack of of traveling uh, calls. I don't watch baseball or baseball. 
Uh, yeah, I got that one right. Woo! Rules. Yeah. I think it's kind of dumb. It's, it's... Um, I don't watch basketball anymore, so. Mainly because they don't call traveling. Or, um, uh, I don't know if it's double dribble, if they put their hands on the bottom of the ball, and then, I don't know. Dribbling these days. All right. Um, number five. Which Evangelist cats did Dwight freeze in the office? I don't know. The, it's been a long time since I've seen this episode. So I, I put the name Whiskers. Put the name Whiskers. Sprinkles. Oh. Darn it. Oh. Poopy. All right. Well, uh, generic cat name. Generic cat game. That's a good game. Yeah, well, a good guess. Yeah, sure. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Who is the next one? Um, oh, yes. Elena with the, uh, the, the types of curly hairs. Um including the subcategories. Lay it, lay it on me, Elena. How many are there? I answered 20. I answered 20. This is probably not right. Speaking of someone who has curly hair. <laughs> no. Uh, and then Kievit, I I'm not sure I can answer uh, that question because I'm not a, a history. Um, I mean, sure, that's not the that's that's not the um, um, kind of stream we're doing right now. Elena. How many subtypes? We'll come back to you. Uh, next, the next question was, um, I think it was Merrick's, yeah. Uh, chessboard killer officially murdered 62 people, but how many did he claim? Uh, what, what do you got, Merrick? What do you got? I said 78, like he claimed more. Well, then I get that answer. I get that answer right then. Because I said 78. 70 to 100. Thanks. I appreciate that. <laughs> All right. Uh, the next one was also an office question. Um, the office casting team originally wanted who to audition for the role of Dwight. Um... Sophia, who's that? <laughs> yeah, go to <laughs> that's funny. Uh, so Sophia, let me know who I said. Andy Dick. I said Andy Dick because like I'm I was I'm blanking on names. I'm pretty sure once I see you, um, once I see the answer, John Krasinski. I thought it okay. So I did hear that. And I thought John Krasinski wanted, not the other way around. I thought he wanted, not the other way around. Yeah, yeah, I know who Jay Kras is. Um, I thought he wanted it, though, not the other way around. So I answered Andy Dick, so I clearly don't get it right. I was thinking about putting John Krasinski, but the thing in my, the thing in my head said, don't do it, don't do it. And so I didn't do it. Okay. Um, so I got... So I said 20, Elena. Nine total. Um, that's a lot. That's a lot. Uh-oh. Clearly, um, I got it wrong, though. So regardless of the correct answer, I, I did get it wrong. Because uh, it wasn't Andy Dick. Um, okay, Tyler's 
question. I think it was Tyler's question, right? Yeah. So who are the founders of Delta Sigma Phi? Um, I'm sure you had to learn that when you um, were initiated. Um, but having not been one, um, I answered John and Steve. Yep. And I stand by that answer. I'm sure one of them's name was John. Everyone's name is John. John and Steve. Founders of Delta Sigma Phi. John and Steve. I I await um uh Tyler you saying, Well done. Well done. Yep. And then the last one from Grayson in 1938, Al Albert Hoffman synthesized what substance in Sandoz lab that is often regarded as the future of modern psychiatry? I think you're referring to LSD. Um, and then, so that was my guess. LSD. Um, let me know if that's what... So Tyler's saying Charles Tonser and Myers... <laughs> Meyer Bosky. Okay, John and Steve is who I'll call them. Uh, we'll, we'll say John Tonser and Steve Bosky. Those are better names. Decided to give me a really hard one, you think? Uh, yeah, LSD, all right. So, I got 3.5. I got I got 3.5. 70 people were mauled by lions. Jeez. Making a movie. Uh so I got a 3.5. And the average that you said was 5.89. What happened? What happened? Well, I'll tell you what happened. One. Um and I think uh Grayson gave me a gimme on this one. Um but uh This tends to be the case when you have a lot of when you have a, a, a teacher that has um, seemingly uh, expansive knowledge, okay? And so the attribution students tend to make with their uh, with their teacher is that they know more than the domain that they're teaching you in, right? Um, and so, you know, some of you threw in some pop culture stuff, some of you threw in some history stuff, uh, some of you, uh, threw in, uh, oh, and then, and then Grayson, uh, threw in that, uh, drug stuff. Can't get drugs by me. Um, so, I didn't do very well. And that's what, that's why I asked you, out of ten questions... How many would I get right before we started doing this? Okay. Um, because most of the time, I'm not saying, I won't say all the time, but most of the time um, this is that I do this and that I've, I've seen this done in other uh, contexts is um, uh, students will overestimate, um, except for Tyler, who gave me a four. And so well done because I got a 3.5. But everyone else, um, thank you for the flattery. Uh, but I knew how I was going to do. Did I let on how I was going to do? Uh, maybe. Um, and a, a 3.5 is actually better than I've done in recent years. So um, last year, I can't remember if I did it in the spring or the fall of Gen Psych. I did this and um, I got a 2. And uh, I taught a social cognition class uh, back in 2016, and I believe I got one out of ten right. Um, so, yeah, so this, this is attribution about teacher infallibility when it comes to knowledge. And, of course, as a human, I cannot have, I cannot have all of that knowledge, even though I have significantly thin knowledge in a given domain that's my p that's what my phd represents and i have interests elsewhere i'm not gonna know m most other things 
I'm not going to know most other things. So now you know that your teachers are super fallible and they don't know everything. And a good teacher will say, you know, I don't know that. Which leads me to, before I forget, before I forget, so we're going to move on from that. Um, yesterday, a question was asked. Um, yesterday, a question was asked on the, the forums about self-fulfilling prophecies and um, whether or not you can have a self-fulfilling prophecy on your own. And so I didn't know the answer to that question, but I felt like I wanted to mention it. And I, and I of course, promptly forgot to mention it yesterday during the stream. Um... So I asked my colleagues, uh, who are social psychologists, what they thought of that, and um, they said, uh, I don't remember who asked that question, by the way, um, they said, no, it's, I mean, though it sounds like it, it sounds like you can enter in a self-fulfilling prophecy of your own, the definition and for lack of a better word, rules surrounding um, self-fulfilling prophecy is that um, um, you need at least two people uh, and it needs to be a social interaction. So to, to answer that question, can you have a self-fulfilling prophecy like I'm going to wake up one day and say to myself, today I'm going to have a good day. It's not it's actually not called the that's that wouldn't be called self-fulfilling prophecy because self-fulfilling prophecy requires at least two people to make it work um, because it is a social interaction effect. Um, the waking up and saying, "I'm today I'm going to have a good day can be considered the Galatea effect, G-A-L-A-T-E-A -E um, effect. Or we can just call them what they are, which are affirmations, self-affirmations. Okay, things that we say to ourselves to make us feel better about ourselves. So that would be a self-affirmation. So that was a good question and something that I didn't know, even though it is in my thin knowledge of psychology. I don't know everything in psychology. And so, you know, I went and I asked. Um, this is slowly turning into a class of saying, it's okay to be wrong. Uh, so <laughs> that's, that's been the theme of this week so far is that, uh, it's okay to be wrong and it's okay to say that you don't know things. So if anything that I would uh, like to impart for you this week and maybe in future weeks is that. All right. Any questions about teacher infallibility or fallibility? And let me know in the chatter adder. If a person pretends to be right even when they're wrong. If a person pretends to be right even when they're wrong. I think is is a biased way of, of answering. I think I think that's I think it's pretty clear that that person's trying to protect their ego, protect their self esteem, um, save face, that sort of thing. I think. Okay, okay, so because this was a sort of narrow lecture topic on the video that you watched, most of the questions centered around um, causal attributions, and and then most of them centered around the fundamental attribution error. But before we jump into those things, I do want to finish the self-serving bias uh, thing that we started a couple of days ago. So in that chat, you identified your strengths. Um, and if you don't remember what those were, that's fine. You probably know your strengths, and you probably could um, pull your strengths out. Like if I said, all right, you're all applying for a job now. Please list your top three uh, strengths, okay? Um, you probably could think about them. I'm not asking literally for them um, because what I do want as a follow-up to that is I want you to then now in chat let me know what your perceived weaknesses are um 
what are your perceived weaknesses? And I will assess them as your potential employer. So drop those in chat right now when you get a chance to. Um, think about it for a, uh, 30 seconds, a minute, and just start jotting them down. I got you on the spot. I got you on the spot. <laughs> la 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 la. La 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 la. <laughs> Alright, Golden Duke participating in this. Alright. Swimming, spelling, and being in the spotlight in a large group of people. Welcome to the spotlight. No, I'm just kidding. Swimming, that's a weakness. You're, don't worry, for this job, you won't be required to swim. Um, all right, Destiny, get overwhelmed if things move too fast or too much is happening at once. Okay. Rachel, procrastinator, care sometimes too much about what others' opinions. Getting overwhelmed easily. Okay. Ask a question again? Yeah, yeah. I'll, uh, I'll type it, Tyler, just in case you didn't hear me. Um... By your weaknesses. People pleasing. Okay. I would say that is not a weakness, Grayson. Codependency. Intolerance of stupidity. I would also say that is not a weakness. Okay. Care too much about what others think of me and social media stresses me out. I wouldn't I would say that social media stresses you out is not a weakness. Over emotional, not a weakness. Not very good with time management. Okay. Don't do well in groups I'm not familiar with. Okay. Slight lack of patience, not a weakness. Now if you said I have no patience, then that would be a weakness. Social anxiety, procrastination, can't comfortably speak in front of people. Okay. Ooh, Merrick. Mild psychosis. Uh, I applaud you for saying that in public. Several teddy bears in a trench coat with one brain cell between them. Okay. Uh, Elena, impulsive. Overwhelmed in high-stress situations. Okay. Chloe, low patience. Depends. I don't know if I would classify that as... Um, a weakness. It depends. It depends. Anger. Okay. Procrastinator. Too forgiving. Not a weakness. Arguer. Eh. Depends on if you're just being a contrarian for contrar for contrary sake. Um, I think there's a difference between somebody who wants to debate versus somebody who just actively says the opposite of what others are saying. So I don't know if that I don't know if that's going to be a weakness. Um. So, your self-serving, your self-serving, uh, Tyler, um, get lazy sometimes, not a weakness, uh, organization at times, shy, not a weakness, hmm, it seems like your weaknesses, for some of you, aren't actually weaknesses, and then others are definitely weaknesses, like procrastination, that, that definitely is a weakness, okay? Um, <laughs> but I will say for procrastination, um, uh, another, uh, colleague of mine has said, you know, is procrastination a necessarily bad thing? Like if we were going to compare strengths and weaknesses, is it necessarily bad? Who doesn't procrastinate? Um, and many of you said procrastinate, like I think half of you said something about procrastination. So who doesn't procrastinate? Right? Who 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 is so virtuous that they're like, nope, I do everything when I'm told to to do it. Because that person is lying. No. <laughs> um, and then the other uh classification that students generally put for weaknesses when asked this question within the the um 
um, umbrella and the couching of this being self-serving um, are considered self-problems. These are considered self-problems. So things like, um, well, I sometimes work too hard and expect too much of myself. So these are self-problems and not actually things that are going to get in the way of you working, right? They're not actually going to um, impact a job, right? And so are they actually weaknesses? I would say not, right? Um, so self-serving bias. Somebody asked the question, is self-serving bias, attributional bias, healthy or unhealthy? So now that we've done this, what would you say? Just healthy or unhealthy? You have a choice. Let me know in chat what you think is, since we've just talked about self-serving bias in this way, would you consider it healthy or unhealthy? Okay, we've got an unhealthy. healthy it depends on the situation it depends but healthy healthy but also also not all of you towing the line here mostly healthy healthy I think it's healthy in some aspects but probably most unhealthy I think the context matters. Okay. For those of you who are saying the context matters, I'd like for you to, um, if you can, uh, not to put you on the spot, but if you can, think of a context where it would be healthy versus a context where it would not be healthy. Um, and drop that in chat. All right. She for jumping in with music. Hmm. I don't know what you mean by that. There is a music, yep, there is a, a small music bed. Nothing too crazy. Mm -hmm. Hmm. All right. Anybody have? Okay. Merrick dropping in here. It can be healthy to know and be aware to of yourself in that way, but some people will focus on that in inappropriate times or obsess over it. Okay, so do you have any... So my question then goes back to, do you have any specific circumstances? Specific circumstances. Because I, I have uh, an opinion on, I have an opinion on that. Um, so 
slash what researcher research has, I guess. Um, but uh, I want to hear if 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 you have your opinions. What contexts are do you struggling? Are you identifying? I think it's probably unhealthy if you attribute your success to internal factors without objectively looking at other causes, which can cause ego issues. Okay, great. So I like that. I like that. It's possible. Um, so it really depends on it really depends on the culture in which you grow up in. Okay, and whether or not you're going to engage in self-serving bias, but. Um, to answer the question, is self-serving attributional bias healthy or unhealthy? I'm going to say that it is, generally speaking, um, and healthy slash unhealthy is maybe not the best dichotomy, but be that as it may, we'll take it. Um, that if we were going to argue, um, is it useful and do useful thing are useful things healthy for us um it's not good if you are resting on it if you're resting on your laurels so to speak um kind of like what grayson mentioned but overall it's an adaptation that we have to protect ourselves from damaging psychological information um and so that's why we do it Okay, that's why we do it. It's it's an ad, it's a cognitive adaptation for um for dealing with potentially harmful psychological information. Um and Merrick, you added something here. Like if you get an Anna test and you can claim it's your hard work, but if someone turns you down for a lunch or something and you blame it solely on yourself. Because there's no other way they would say no, and that's all you think about for the rest of the day. Yeah. Um, then I don't. Then I would say that um, while attribution processes are working to first identify it, I don't know if, if thinking about it for the rest of the day becomes uh, this is what makes self-serving unhealthy. Because you'll probably explore other things. And other reasons, other attributions. But that, I think that's, that's a good way to, I, th I think what you, what most of you said was, yeah, it depends. I think there was a hefty group of depends. I think, you, I think you all have the, the right idea um, about self-serving bias. But from my perspective, this is a this is a, a bias that we adapted and it uh, it helps us okay it helps us and so this brings us to um, talking about attribution in general so I wanted to talk about attribution in general and let's start by explaining other people's behaviors Okay, because we're going to talk about attribution here. So, um, let me give you the link to this in chat here. You can go and do this um, on your own. Now, ignore what it says about fundamental attribution error because it's a slight misrepresent misrepresentation. But just try to um, try to do the uh, activity. Okay, so read the directions. Excuse me. All right, so this is how we'll play is what it says. I'll give you an observation in the form of a statement. You, you think of an explanation for it. Then click to get the answer and your score. As you play, see if you can stretch your synaptic connections, 
silly to invent answers that are more varied and inventive while staying within generally accepted standards of reality <laughs> no klingons are para paranormal okay so let's do observation one a married woman goes to a single man's apartment two nights every week for three hours what's your explanation you can say it in chat That's fishy. Married woman goes to a single man's apartment two nights every week for three hours. What's your explanation? He is her therapist. Okay. It's your job to clean the apartment. Maybe he hired to... <laughs> All right. What's the obvious? There's an uh, obviously an, an uh, obvious. Let's let's see what it says. So give your score. Give yourself a score. Okay. Okay, so if you said having an affair, you get zero points. Um, you get one point to say made. Um, if you said mother, caring for son, you get two. Music teacher, or any kind of teacher, you get three points. And then, um, you know, Merrick and uh, Aaliyah, four points. Okay. <laughs> you don't have an affair on schedule. Uh, especially during Corona. Alright, two police officers. We're only going to do a few of these. Two police officers visit your next door neighbor's house. What's your explanation? Okay. What's your explanation for this one? Two police, police officers visit your next door neighbor's house. What's your explanation? And speaking of, justice for Breonna Taylor. <clears throat> okay, investigating a crime or murder. Martial law. <laughs> Filed a noise complaint because they were lighting off fireworks for the last two months. Visiting an old friend, an investigation of some sort, they're questioning them about a crime, okay? Telling them someone has died, all right. Noise complaint, okay, let's see what we got here. Police officers are questioning your neighbors about some dreadful crime they have committed. So if you said something about a dreadful crime of your by your neighbor, you get no points. Police officers are visiting the house because the neighbors are their friends, you get a point for that. Uh, neighbors are themselves police officers. Did you think about that one? That could have been their home. Two points for that. Police officers are asking questions about you. <gasps> That's three points. And then other answers that are more creative get four points. Yeah. So passed away, I would say. So if they're telling somebody about um, passed away. Um, then that it. But the noise complaint, that's zero points because it's a dreadful crime they committed. Okay. Alright. Um, we'll do a couple more. <laughs> I like this one. Um, a person smelling of stale liquor is buying aspirin at 6 a.m. What's your explanation? What is your explanation for person smelling of stale liquor 
is buying aspirin at 6 a.m. Bad night out? Hmm. Shouldn't be buying aspirin, though. An alcoholic on their first few days of sobriety. Mm, alcoholic. They're buying it for a friend who helped, they helped the night before. Okay. They never went to sleep, and they're preparing for the hangover. I love it. It's laundry day, and they are out of aspirin. So they're wearing clothes from another night. Bar fight. <laughs> Bar fight. Oh, I love it. All right. Nope, that's the wrong one. Oh, we won't do that one. For, uh, so zero points for those of you who said the person was out partying all night and has a headache as a result. Okay. Uh, one point for the person is buying aspirin for their partner who has the flu. Okay. Person works in Johnny's Blues Bar, or just a bar, and finished the late shift. Two points. Nobody said that. Oh, except Rachel. He got in there just, just ahead of it. Person spilled a bottle of rum when trying to reach the breakfast cereal... Bump their head on the open cupboard and are looking for a remedy. Well, that is a ditty. That is a ditty. And then anything more creative gets four points. Yeah. Um, not tracking points, by the way. All right, one more. Uh, one more. Let's do this, since many of you are teenagers. Teenager carrying a heavy backpack runs out the door of a convenience store. What's your explanation? Did he just steal from 7-Eleven? My convenience. My convenience. <clears throat> Excuse me. They just got breakfast for the 8.30 class, and it's 8.26. Yep. <laughs> uh, they're late. They're late for a very important date. He's picking up snacks after school and has to get home quick. They got a call and have to leave for an emergency. <laughs> Maybe. His ride abruptly left them when they were about to go to school. Snacks. Late for class. Late for something. Because he was stealing. Late because... You don't want to think he's stealing. Well, that's good. All right. So, again, zero points uh, if you think the teenager just robbed a store. One point for those of you who said that he was light. <laughs> the teenager is a track star and runs everywhere. Two points. Store is on fire. The store is on fire! Uh, and anything more creative. I think everyone... My son's trying to bother me. <laughs> um, all right. So that's the last one we are going to do. Um, that's the last one that uh, we are going to do. Um, and we're going to take a five-minute break. Okay. And um, so come back at 10.06. Come back at 10.06. And we will continue.
Alrighty. Getting back to it. Getting back to it. I guess we'll go back to this. We will go back to this one. Alrighty. Fundamental attribution. All right, fun to, so so you notice that on the on these things that uh, this is where the slightly misrepresentation of the fundamental attribution error is that we think that they just robbed the store because they're an awful person, right? Um, so that's why this this was a little fun little thing, but generally speaking, <clears throat> not not fully FAE. It is good to, um, as some of you did, check your first or seemingly obvious attribution for the person uh, before you said something in, in chat, which, which is good, right? That's, generally speaking, how we have to handle our biases is we have to check them before they come and um, wreck us, right? Uh, so, a lot of questions about FAE, and I'm going to talk about attributions in general for over the next um, uh, 50 minutes here. So, attributions. Just to remind everybody, uh, just to remind everybody in class, and for those of you who are watching, are explanations that we give to ourselves for other people's behaviors, as well as our own behaviors. But uh, I think for the fundamental attribution error, we'll go ahead and just say that this is something that you are thinking of to give to somebody else. So, um, in that vein, a uh, couple of questions on um, fundamental attribution and attribution in general. Uh, so we're going to talk about that. So one of the questions was, can you describe the FAE more? And totally, sh totally will. Okay. Um, and then another one is uh, uh, apply to situations where someone is in a bad mood because of their situation. Okay. I'll get to that one as well. And then it's bad to base our opinion on, on, on the people rather than the environment. Uh, is that the same thing as judging a person by their actions instead of judging them on the basis of their actions? Um, which I think is where I want to where I want to start. Okay, where I want to start. So the idea here is that, and I and I said in the video that there's a difference between individualistic cultures, Americans, and collectivistic cultures like the, so Japanese culture or Chinese culture where the group. Um, is more important than the individual, generally speaking. And the individual concerns are what increase or reduce, that individualistic concern is what increases or reduces the um, attribution error. Okay. So... The question is, when we do this, when we make this error, when we say somebody's behavior, because remember, we're not in that person's head. We don't know why they do things, and sometimes you don't know why you do things, right? So we don't know why people do things, and so we have to make guesses, and that's what the attributions are. These are guesses for their behavior, okay, because we're not inside their head. So we have to make these guesses. And these guesses tend to be uh, cause and effect based. That's why in the lecture video I said they are cause and effect or causal attributions. We want to know why someone has done what they have done. 
And the individualistic route is to say it's because of their of who they are as a person, their dispositional or their personal traits, right? Uh, and the collectivistic route is to say, oh, it's because of the circumstances, the context with which they perform that action, okay? And so the question here is, since we do one or the other in order to determine why somebody did what they did, um, do we, is it the same thing as judging a person by their actions instead of on the basis of their actions? Well, the question here is the basis of their actions is the attribution that we are making, okay, rather than judging them on what they do, okay? So the basis is either the internal or external attribution that we make, whether it's due to dispositional factors or it's due to external or situational factors. That's the basis of their action, right? And so when we then judge people on their behavior, then we have now moved beyond the attribution. So I wanted to I wanted to say this to separate those. I wanted to separate those ideas. Okay. Um And so I let me give you a couple of let me give you a couple of examples because I think this would be um this will be helpful. Okay. So these are from um, my colleagues. So these are uh, social psych professors who have, have, have written down their uh, experiences with FAE. Okay, so, so I'm going to read these. Sorry that it's going to be read, but here we go. I let my students know that I regularly exhibit the errors and biases that we dis discuss in class. That's also true for me, too. And none is easier than the FAE. So I'm in a fa so here's where the story starts. I'm in a fast food restaurant, and when I decide I need when I decide I need to use the bathroom, the door to the single user bathroom is closed. Is anybody in there? I try the doorknob to find out. It is unlocked, so I proceed to enter. A man with his back to me, fortunately, is at the ur urinal. Fortunately, his back. You get it. I exit and close the door. Enter the FAE, Fundamental Attribution Error. Why wouldn't he lock the door? What kind of guy is he? I am not just led to negative attributions. I also consider that he is comfortable enough with himself that he is not embarrassed. Right? So you probably know where this is going. As I take my turn in the bathroom, I notice that the lock is broken on the door. As I continue to use the bathroom, another person opens the door to find it occupied. I wonder, what was he thinking? And why didn't I or the previous occupant tell the next person that the lock was broken? Okay. So the first part of the attribution process was internal. It was all dispositional questions. What kind of a guy was he what kind of a guy was he okay the first man when you are thinking about the reason for why people do stuff as due to what kind of person they are what they what you think that they're thinking then you are making a potentially biased attribution okay you are, are are making this error right um because it was easily explained away as hey man it doesn't work it doesn't work okay so oh aj welcome to the show buddy all right Glad you could finally make it. I'm glad you could finally make it. A W. All right. Okay. So here's another one for you. 
Another example from another colleague of mine. Today I was stopped at a red light. At one point, I edged my car forward slightly. I imme- um, excuse me. Immediately after I did this, the man next to me in his very sporty, turbo, fancy some sort of car edged forward also. I'm sure you have been in this situation. I at once thought to myself, what a jerk. He doesn't want me to get ahead of him when the light turns green. Keep that in mind, the what a jerk part. At this point, I realized that I wasn't taking this man's perspective, and I was making a fundamental attribution error. Okay, Perhaps my movement forward made him think the light was green, or perhaps he was just tired of having his foot foot on the brake like I was. Okay, so the first attribution, the immediate attribution by this um, American professor was that he thought this person next to him was a jerk. Okay. Jerk. I'm sorry, she. This is a, um, it's a female professor. My bad. Um, she thought this person was a jerk immediately, but then was like, oh, wait, no, maybe that wasn't the case. Could very well be that this dude in the sports car is a jerk. Could very well be. Okay. But it becomes an error or becomes this bias when you don't actually reflect on the other things. Okay. When you don't reflect on the other maybe situational factors that might be leading um, this person to behave in this way. Okay. Next one. Okay. Next one. Same, same professor. Unfortunately, our new apartment is not completely soundproof. My husband and I can easily hear the person above us. I used to live in an apartment. This is me speaking now. I used to live in an apartment um, uh, with with my wife. It was just the two of us uh, at the time. And the wall that we shared with our neighbor was so thin they argued constantly. It was maddening. It was maddening. So we had our TV against that wall, and we would just turn it up because, like, it was awful. Turns out it was the room of the daughter that li- <laughs> that lived there. She was a teenager, I think. And her dad was the one who was constantly yelling at her. Constantly screaming at her. Oh my god, it was... It was, it was so bad. We felt so bad for her. But at the same time, we are like, we don't want to hear your arguments, so that's why we're turning up the TV. And then she would bang on the wall, and then eventually she left a message on our door saying, your TV is too loud when I try to go to sleep. It's like, okay. Yeah, we'll turn the TV down when you stop screaming at each other. Yeah. Oh, my God. Okay. Okay, back to the story, okay? (laughs) My husband and I can easily hear the person above us. We have never met the person, but we already have a preconceived idea about who she is, what she does, and what her attitudes are. Last night, she came home very late, and right away, Bruce, this person's husband, starts going on about what a tramp she must be for staying out so late. Rough, man. Bro. Um, he constantly makes fundamental attribution errors about the person above us since we have never met her we cannot possibly take her actual perspective of things however we could give her the benefit of the doubt who knows maybe her car broke down and she was on vacation and her plane came in late although we don't know her and we probably shouldn't think things about her without even meeting her it's fun to make up ideas about who the person upstairs really is, unless you're shaming her, which is not great. Uh, so don't shame people if you don't know them. Um, I just don't shame people in general. Yeah. Um, so, of course, fundamental attribution error. Okay, last one. This is the last one. 
Um, let me know after this one if it's still not clicking with you, because then we can go over it more. So this is the last one. This is from another uh, another colleague. I tell my students of how I used to drive into a gas station and get upset at another driver. Now, this has probably happened to you, too, if you were a driver. Whose car was sitting at the second pump in an aisle while there was no car at the first pump. What an idiot. Why didn't he, she just pull up to the first pump? Of course, it usually hit me that perhaps there was there had been a car at the first pump when this driver pulled in. I no longer jump to the conclusion that the driver is an idiot. So I use this example of how it is possible to control this error. And we discuss how difficult this is. Okay. And that speaks to... Somebody asked this question. Did I write that one down? Mm -mm. I guess I didn't, but I think somebody did ask about whether or not um, can, can you can you stop making the FAE? And uh, my answer is yes, you can stop if you stop to think about it. And Sophia, so basically avoid FAE, do we need to ponder possibilities and not to assume any of them are true? Bingo. 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 As much as I... As much as, as humans are um, social beings and we need to know, we do need to know what other people are doing and why they're doing it, uh, we shouldn't make assumptions about what they're doing and why they're doing it and to avoid the FAE as Sophia is asking um yeah you just you you need to ponder possibilities both internal and and, and external yeah some some people are idiots uh some people are rude uh some people are ditzy some people are happy go lucky some people are lazy right and that might actually be the explanation for their um, for their behavior, but from the perspective of the perceiver, which you all are in those or and and who those those professors were in those scenarios, you have to you have to take a step back and go, well, maybe that's not the reason for this particular behavior. Okay, could be something else. A lot of, uh, uh, I will say this, um, and this is why it's a bias, uh, slash error. A, a, a lot of things we do are caused by the environment that we are in, caused by the context that we are in. So if we are going to make an attribution error, or, sorry, not an error. If we're going to make an attribution, well then the attribution should be, okay, what context are we in? What context are we in? Uh, AJ says, uh, or or weighing all outside possibilities for making before making an inference. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Uh, think about the reasons. But that requires, that does require having an understanding um, that maybe your first intuition isn't correct and thinking a little bit more deeply about it. As I said um, earlier in this week with dual process, with dual process models, that we have this super quick, automatic, uh, fast thinking um, thinking type or or system of thinking, um, and then we also have this slow thinking type, uh, and deliberate and things that we can actually think about, and so sometimes it performs the necessary check on those intuitions again the fundamental attribution error is a bias because it's how we think about individuals okay and so if you're in an individualistic society it's how we think about individuals people are who they are because uh, or, or people do what they do because of who they are um, and that speaks directly to who they are, uh, whatever behaviors that you catch them doing or you, you observe them doing, that speaks to who they are as a person, right? 
So, yeah. Uh, other questions about the FAEs. Is it, it's a little bit stronger. Let me know if it's not clicking for you uh, in chat. Let me know if it's not clicking for you. Eighty six. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want to give a face a uh, face to the voice? Sure. So this is Astrid, everyone. Hi, I'm super way. sweaty. I was just outside with the kids and the dog. So I'm glowing pretty, pretty well. Hi. Hi. <laughs> You're cute. You have my attention. Oh, night bot. It's a bot. I was like, what's the bot? Stop spamming. Hi. Oh, that's a cute golden duke. I like your little emote. Yeah, it's cute. Good times. Yep. Hope you all are having fun. We're trying. Stories about. <laughs> I, I that comes. Up. Oh yeah. This is tight. Da 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 da. Alrighty. Uh, that brief interlude. If you want to see pictures of Murphy, you can find uh, Astrid on Instagram. Her account is public, uh, and it's Yastrid. It's Y A and like what three S's? Four S's. Yastrid. Or if you search. Or Astrid, Swan. There aren't very many of them. She's, she's, like I said, unique. Okay. Alrighty. Um, there were a couple of questions about Kelly's model that I think uh, that I wanted to jump into with some examples. So if you were struggling with uh, that... Oh, actually, no. Before... Before I get into that, I do want to mention there is a, um, I think this is, uh, yes. So, back in 2005, back in 2005, there was a big old storm that hit New Orleans. Katrina, Hurricane Katrina. Uh, the video doesn't work anymore, but whatever. Um, <clears throat> there was an interesting phenomenon that occurred. And it has a lot of reasons for why it occurred. But one of those very, very plainly was the fact that internal attributions were made about the people who stayed versus the people who left in advance of the hurricane. Okay? Um, so it killed about 1,800 people, okay, $100 billion in damage from Florida to Texas, with the hardest hit area being New Orleans, okay, um, it breached every levy, um, levy, excuse me, in New Orleans, and it flooded almost the entire city, and m all of the, and most of the neighboring parishes, or communities hey okay, neighborhoods all right they called for a mandatory evacuation okay some people chose to not obey that order right 
And then so people had to get rescued, of course. So a researcher went out and wanted to know why they thought some people left and some people didn't leave. Okay. And so the general consensus seemed to be that they were irresponsible or indecisive, the people who didn't leave. Perhaps even lazy or stupid. Okay. Passivity is a character trait, and so it was considered here to be a character flaw. Okay. You ask people why they didn't do it? Well, here's your answer why they didn't do it. But that's not the whole story, right? There could be reasons, other reasons, why people didn't leave. And so that's what the researchers attempted to find out. Okay. Sorry about that. That was a little loud. Um, <clears throat> two surveys. One of observers and one of survivors. This is from the folks at Stanford, Nicole Stevens and her colleagues. Okay, from Stanford back in 2006 or seven, something like that. Uh, so shortly after the hurricane, I know many of you were um, really young then, really young then, or possibly not even alive. I don't know, because that would make you 15, and you're not 15. So you were really young then. Okay, so two surveys, one to observers... So people outside of the immediate damaged area. And then the second survey, two survivors, okay? Um, so the study of observers were relief workers, firefighters, physicians, and so forth, okay? Their survey said that these people were irresponsible, indecisive, perhaps lazy or stupid. That's what their survey showed. So these observers said that's what their problem was, okay? <clears throat> and when they were asked, well, what about the what about the people who left? They said um, more self reliant and har hard working. Okay, survivors tell a different story. When psychologists, when these psychologists, this is the paragraph that I want to mention here. Um, those who stayed behind did not feel powerless or passive. To the contrary, they saw themselves as connected with their neighbors communitarian rather than self-reliant their stories emphasize faith in god and their feelings of caring for others in short they didn't see themselves as failing to take action but rather taking a different kind of action adapting to life's travails and staying strong despite hardship now i'll ask you what do you think the race of these two groups of people, observers over here, and people who stayed, survivors, were. This is an extremely important question, and it reflects a lot of ingrained biases that we have that we will discuss in a couple of weeks. The middle of the middle of two weeks from now. What 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 about the my why am I gonna, there we go. I couldn't, couldn't click on it. So Merrick says uh, people who stayed were Cajuns. Okay. So if you're not familiar with Cajuns, it's a uh, subculture of um, African Americans and Black Americans who uh, came from the Caribbean and specifically French Caribbean and settled. Yeah. Who were white, Joe? You gotta specify who was white. Caucasians stayed. AJ says uh, white folks were the ones who stayed.
white people were the ones who stayed. Okay. Anybody else have any uh, ideas about the observers versus the ones who stayed versus the ones who left? I think we were closer with the community, but lazy were probably darker skinned. Okay. People of color. My people would have left. Okay. So, this story is in uh, this story is important to the overall narrative of Hurricane Katrina, um, and what you see and how other stories are told about this and the. The video that you might come across and etc. So people who are trying to to leave or any sort of looting. Um, there's there's definitely this bias here. So the vast majority of people who stuck around through the storm were black. Because that's the vast majority of the um, several areas around New Orleans as well as the... Um, larger part of the city in general okay um and a lot of these this language here reflects how much of the history of black america is couched within okay it's a lot of community a lot of um faith in god um communitarian right because that that comes from the days of slavery where groups of groups of slaves had to work together and so this is shared throughout the south communitarian idea people who left were generally speaking white the people who were observers in the study were generally speaking white and so this idea of irresponsible indecisive lazy or stupid that that is that is the systemic racism that you've been hearing about here right and so how i'm going to connect this with you know two weeks here two weeks <clears throat> in two weeks when we talk about stereotyping prejudice and discrimination is a lot of it does come from making these biased errors and a lot of these biased attributions are couched within our stereotypes of people and those groups that these people are in so yeah from the from the outside the story seems rather innocuous but when you look at it a little bit deeper then you understand then you begin to understand right there is a deeper component here and it is race related okay so just be aware of that. Go ahead and close that. I'm going to close that since we are doing on it. Questions about that story or anything that I just said? AJ, you are you are updating your Caucasians who stayed slash left? I mean, I wasn't grading whether or not you were right or wrong. Any, uh, any, uh, anything at all, anything at all, and then we will move into, I don't think we're going to do this one, but I do want to show you them. We'll see. All right, no worries, man, no worries. Okay. So... Questions about Kelly's model. Actually, you know what? I'm going to try to put it up here. I can 
jadi Excuse you. <laughs> oh, that one needs to. Uh, I just want to. Your dress. There we go. There we go. Change back to this view. Okay, so co variation model. Okay. And why can't. Why isn't my zoom working? Oh, it's very annoying. There we go. Big now. Big now. Okay, so there were some questions about Kelly's covariation model, so I thought, hey, you know, might as well. Um, let's. We'll end today by talking about Kelly's covariation model. Um, just to make sure that everyone has the right idea. Um, going into the quiz tomorrow. All right, so here's the covariation model. We have the three components, consist, uh, consensus, consistency, and distinctiveness. So um, Kelly decided that, you know, let's talk about highs and lows, even though this these three components exist on a continuum. Uh, con continua. So this is one continuum, another continuum, and a third continuum, right? Uh, so highs and lows, so either end of the continua for each of these, okay? So high con so consensus, how do other people behave versus this other person, okay? So I'm observing person A's behavior. We'll call him Jimmy. Jimmy's behavior, is it like other people or not? So high, most other people behave like Jimmy is behaving right now, or not. Jimmy is not behaving like other people right now. Okay, so that's what consensus is. So I'm just going over the definitions again. Now, consistency, does Jimmy himself usually behave like this? Hi, yep, that's that. Jimmy's being consistent. Low, he doesn't. He seldom behaves like this. So this is out of the ordinary for his consistent behavior. Out of the ordinary for Jimmy to act like this. And then the third component is distinctiveness. Is this is Jimmy's behavior in this situation different from that in other situations? So how distinct is this behavior right now versus in other other nows, other situations, right? So um, this, uh, most people behave like this in this context. So distinctiveness is kind of like consensus, but for the context, not for the behavior. I hope that makes sense. So context, specific behavior, context, specific behavior, context, specific behavior. Okay. So, and then low distinctiveness would be not many people behave like this now in this context. So, Jimmy is distinct from these people. Okay. High distinctiveness, low distinctiveness. Okay. It sort of feels like it's backwards, because like high distinctiveness should feel like this, like it's very distinct. But is Jimmy's behavior in this situation from others in this situation? Okay. So how do people normally act in a movie theater? Okay. How do people normally act in a movie theater? Jimmy is is standing uh is standing on his chair. I actually feel like these should be reversed. Let me see if there's a better one. What am I doing? Let's see if this one. Oh, this is the one that I have, yeah. I feel like that that was wrong. Let's there we go. Oops. There we go. This is the one that I have in my thing. I don't know why this didn't come up first. So is um, Jimmy's behavior in this situation different from 
Jimmy's behavior in other situations, right? So this is the this is a better this is clearer for what distinctiveness actually is. Um, Jimmy does not behave like this in most other situations, so that's why it's distinct. Okay, Jimmy does does behave like this in most other situations. That's why distinctiveness is low here and distinctiveness is high here. Okay, and think of it as a distinct behavior. Like I can like I can separate it from Jimmy. I can separate it from Jimmy. Um, okay. Sorry about. Sorry about the um, confusion there. So let me give you uh, some examples of this. Okay. I have two examples again from colleagues um, about it. So I'm going to be reading them off again. Uh, so I does not actually mean me. Okay. Tonight, while I was trying to print out my assignment for this class, my printer suddenly stopped working and would not print anything in black ink. Um, heard that a lot. I've heard that a lot. This is why most of my submissions now are electronic. Only in color. Therefore, I had to print my assignment in blue ink to turn it in. I was a little worried that this seemed unprofessional to turn in a col turn into a college professor. However, I am hoping that you use Kelly's model of attribution. You would re realize that not everyone else turned their assignment in using blue ink, so there is not a consensus. Lo. No. Not a lot of blue ink. I don't always turn in my assignments using blue ink, so it is not consistent. I only turned in this assignment in blue ink, not all, not all papers in blue inked, so it is distinct. So we have low, low, and high. I would hope that you would therefore attribute my blue paper to an external reason, my printer not working, instead of the eternal in <laughs> internal reason that I think blue papers are more exciting. Then maybe they are, but that's not the case here, right? So we have low, low, high. Low consensus, low consistency, high distinctiveness. This would be an internal attribution. This would be an external attribution. And this would be an external attribution. So we have one internal and two external. Hopefully, so according to Kelly, as I mentioned, the rational thing to do then is to be like the external reasons beat down the internal reasons and so you're left with a peace sign. So you're left with those two external reasons if you are a rational person. Does this happen often? Well, in the video I said, nah, probably not. Unless this person clearly explained to their professor my printer wasn't working. But of course, that's not the attribution. That's not the attribution process. The attribution process is thinking about why other people did the stuff without their explanation. Okay. So, here's, a, here's another example. One of my fellow managers came to me today with a complaint about the performance of one of my subordinates. They had been in a meeting together where Tony, the, support, the subordinate, had acted barely... And speak... <laughs> and <laughs> had acted very surly... And obstinate, okay, so just sort of uh, angry and, and defiant, in other ways to say that, uh, about a new process we were trying to implement. John, my peer, made the comment to me that, quote, Tony sure is an uncooperative person. Take note of that. You need to straighten out his attitude, end quote. I asked John if Tony was the only one to act in that manner. 
is the only one to act in that manner. John replied that most others in the meeting were upset, but Tony just happened to be the worst. Okay, so before I continue, I'm putting it all to you. Out of consensus, because this is consensus, I'll give you that. Which do you think? High or low consensus? High or low consensus? Let me know in chat. I'll, re I'll read it again as you are answering. I asked John if Tony was the only one to act in that manner. John replied that most others in the meeting were upset, but Tony just happened to be the worst. So we got a high, we've got a low. Got a high, we've got a low. High, low, high, low. Hi, low. Hi, hi. Hi, hi, hi. Hi. Yep. Yeah. Okay. All right. Seems we've reached consensus on that. You're welcome. So, yes, I would agree that this seems to be high. Most people behave like this. It just seemed like Tony was the worst. So, AJ, uh, you said low, and I get where you you um, you got crossed up on that one because Tony happened to be the worst. That phrase may, may kind of make it seem like this is a um, low situation. But I would say it is high. Okay. All right, continuing here. My next thought was that Tony is usually pretty easygoing and has never been upset when we've implemented a new procedure. I asked John whether he'd ever seen Tony get upset at any other meetings, and John replied he hadn't. Okay, so that's consistency, right? So that would be consistency. Yeah, I get where you, I, I get where you came from on that on AJ. So you know, um, it seems like it's low, but I think um, that the fact that all the other employees are like, oh, um, gives it a more high vibe. Okay, so let's go. Let's go to consistency now. So answer in chat if you think that what I just said was high consistency or low consistency. Let me read it again. Where was I? My next thought was that Tony is usually pretty easygoing and has never been upset when we've implemented a new procedure. I asked John whether he'd seen Tony get upset at any other meetings, and John replied he hadn't. Okay. This also replies to distinctiveness. Uh, so if you want to let me know what... Uh, So, low, low consistency, seldom behaves this way, so Tony seldom behaves this way. I think you all got that. So, now what about distinctiveness? Would you say high or low in that situation for distinctiveness? All right, so we've got, um, I think... Merrick, you're answering for distinctiveness, right? It's kind of hard to tell where one starts and one begins. Hi. 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 Okay. Hi. Okay, I think we, I think the group has the has the has the right idea about these things. So before we run out of time, we said that it was um, high consensus, which is an external attribution. Okay, low consistency, low consistency again, an external attribution, and high distinctiveness again. 
an external. So we actually have three to zero for external attributions. Okay. So again, beat that down. So, uh, um, where am I? By using Kelly's model and considering consensus, consistency, and distinctiveness, we conclude that Tony was acting in an uncharacteristic, uncharacteristic manner and must be upset about the new procedures. An external call, uh, an external cause. Okay, no worries, Tyler. Um, I do have one last one for you. This is from just an observation that uh, somebody had. Um, separate this from the rest of them. I don't know why it wasn't separated. The saleswoman got really excited the other night when Kevin, who was a who is a 19 month old Kevin, <laughs> baby named Kevin, uh, waved bye bye and smiled at her. Uh, she probably thought that Kevin really liked her and that his behavior was highly distinctive. Nah. Nah. Um. I know that he is consistent in waving and smiling, and this was not reserved especially for her. I doubt that all babies wave and smile at everyone so that would not be a consensus. So this is just another another observation about uh, uh, a colleague and their their 19 month old um, at the time, I guess. So high distinctive, um, high high consistency for this baby, um, but probably not consensus. So that is probably an internal reason for um we can say that kevin kevin was likely um smiling and waving by because that's what kevin does that's what kevin does no worries megan um thanks for stopping by yeah unfortunately you'll, you'll miss the the credit for today but um yeah we'll see you next time we'll see you next week all righty any questions about that before we end this stream before we end this stream any questions that anyone might have regarding any of the stuff that we talked about today and i will say one more reminder since many of you are here now i will say one more reminder tomorrow you have the weekly quiz and that's what you need to do tomorrow. That's the only thing you need to do tomorrow. Um, that's the only thing you need to do tomorrow. Okay. Nothing. Nothing else about this class. I don't know if you're taking any any other any other classes, but that's all you need to do for this class. So, alrighty. So that's gonna be it for the stream, y'all. Um, AJ, I'm not entirely sure what question you are asking. Anything do from the presentation? No, live streams are just for discussion and exploration. There's, there's, you get credit for being here, basically, and that's it. Other than that, the asynchronous stuff are the, are the discussion questions and, um, the reading checks. Chapter 8, whatever the... Uh, sorry, I dropped out there for a moment, y'all. Uh, Sophia, if you didn't, I don't remember, I don't know where you um, lost me, but um, I was saying that chapter five and six, yes, uh, yes, 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 uh, is how you have it. So whatever the syllabus says is what I'm going to say. Golden Duke, watching the making of Roar, it's the most dangerous movie. I'll have to check it out. I'll have to check it out. <laughs> All right, everyone. 
I will be on Zoom for the next hour, so if you need to catch me on um, office hours, quote-unquote, to ask me any questions or any issues that you might have from this first week, catch me there. The link has been sent in several emails, so um, catch me there. But until then, um, bye, everybody. Uh, have a good weekend. Good luck on the, the test tomorrow, the quiz, whatever you want to call it. Um, and uh, have a good weekend. Uh, stay, stay cool uh, and stay cool. All right, bye, everybody. Have a wonderful day. <laughs>